Hey everybody, how's it going? Tim Clark here. This video we're gonna look at um, just, I did an effect in a previous video and we're basically gonna look at how I was able to create that effect. And so in a previous video I had this battery and I was holding it and I let go and it was just floating there. So it was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, I got a few comments on that, which was super cool. People, uh, people were, you know, thought it was, you know, looked pretty neat. Uh, one specific comment from uh, Peter Mutino. I hope I'm saying your name right there, but you're like, you know, you should do a tutorial on that. And I was like, and now I'm like, okay, I'll do a tutorial on it. So <laughs> um, yeah. So anyways, let's check it out. Basically, I made this in Cinema 4D Lite, which is super cool because typically when people use Cinema 4D Lite, it's more for like getting 3D text or just making simple primitive shapes and simple objects. Um, people don't usually think of it as, you know, having the capability to create, you know, more complex 3D objects. Granted, this is a bit of an in-between. It does kind of at the outset look a bit more complex, but in reality, it's just a block with, you know, spaces cut out of it and little doohickeys here and there, but there's no kind of natural sweeping shapes like Cinema 4D Lite, you probably couldn't create like a realistic looking uh, tree or plant or human face or anything like that. But you can get away with creating some pretty realistic, you know, mundane objects, even if they do have a bit of um, extra detail like this battery here. So let's just jump it right into it and see how I did it. If I open up Cinema 4D Lite here, here's the battery. So first thing I did with this was I took a bunch of pictures of it uh, with my camera. Let me just show you the pictures there. So these pictures kind of allowed me to just, to model the battery proportionally and get everything in the right place. So I took these pictures, set my camera up on a tripod so the framing stayed the same and I just rotated the battery around so I got all, all the different sides of it. And then I brought those pictures and I set them as the background in Cinema 4D Lite. So as you can see in my alternate angles here, there's one angle, there's another angle. And that allowed me to just, you know, make the battery proportional and make it kind of true to its actual scale and size and everything. So that was the first step. Second step was basically using primitive shapes and creating a bunch of bools, a bunch of booleans out of them. So a boolean is something that allows you to create a, a 3D object and then just take chunks out of it to kind of almost as, almost as if you're chipping away at like a statue. So I basically, yeah, created this by creating booleans. Um, booleans within booleans within booleans, if that makes sense. So let's jump right into it and I'll actually show you what I'm talking about here. So this is the actual battery. And the main big piece of it here, like the actual battery here, let me turn off. So here's, so a key part of this was naming everything correctly because there's a lot of like different layers and objects that are coming together to create the full battery. So definitely a key thing was naming everything, um, labeling all of the uh, objects correctly. Definitely helps out right now too when I want to kind of go back and show uh, what I did. So the big bool, is the big part of the battery. So I just turned that off and you can see here now, these are the kind of all the outside parts of the battery and this big bool, if I turn it back on, that's kind of the main chunk of the battery. So to create that main chunk of the battery, I'm just gonna show you, I'm just gonna open up a different window here. So in Cinema 4D Lite, you can create all these primitive objects. So if I create a cube and then I just scaled it down using my pictures to like the right size of the battery, it was something like that. And then I just started ch taking chunks out of it. So if I go back to the window here, to the battery here, you can see that this, this like main part of the battery is basically like that cube I just created, but it has like these little chunks, like this corner here is kind of, you know, there's a chunk take, taken out of there. Um, this little inset here, there's a chunk taken out of there. If I flip it around, you know, there's a chunk taken out there, um, here. I basically had to create a full block and then take chunks out of it. So let's jump back to the other window again. And the way to take chunks out is I create another cube and this cube will allow me to take a chunk out. So for example, if I wanted to take the corner off similar to the other, um, I'm just gonna delete that, make it another cube. Maybe put it down to like 60 in scale and just move it around here. And then we can just um, look at all our other views to position it in the corner. So if I zoom way in here, 
I'm just gonna eyeball it for now. Let's see here. Let's move it into the corner. So as you can see, it is now sitting in the corner there and we just need to uh, rotate it a bit. I'm gonna rotate it this way, 45 exactly. And then this way, 45 exactly. And it's kind of not covering the whole corner there, so I'm just gonna scale it out again. Whoops, there we go. Make sure it's tall enough too. And then, you know, maybe I'll just move it backwards a little bit so it's not getting too much of the corner. So there we go, it's kind of overlapping. And now this is where the bool comes into place. So I'm gonna put both of those objects in, into what is called a Boolean uh, transformer or something. It's called a bool. So I'm gonna put both of those into the bool. Boom. I just have to stack them correctly. I gotta put that one on the bottom. Whoops. This guy's gotta go on top. Boom, and there we go. Now you can see that the Boolean is having these two objects interact in such a way that the corner is being taken out. So I can select this cube again and move it in and out. And you can see it's just taking a chunk out of the cube. So that's pretty much the process. And um, just creating the main chunk and then taking chunks out of it with other shapes. Now another key thing to, the, to this method is using null objects within bools. So I'll just kind of show you what I mean here. So if I added, if I wanted to take another chunk out of this block, say I created like a cylinder, and we could just make it a bit thinner. And we'll just move it up. So if I wanna just kind of create a hole in the top here, I'll just make this bigger. There we go. I could overlap it and then just put it into the bool, right? But it turns out that a bool can only handle two objects overlapping at once. So as you can see, the cylinder is now working but the, this cube in the corner is no longer taking a chunk out. But simple, simple uh, resolution to that is just creating a null object. So I'll create a null. I'll put that into my bool and I'll group both of these objects into the null. And now it's the null is one kind of object containing two objects. So now it is able to, in fact, to interact with um, two objects. And you can put an infinite amount of shapes into your null object, and they'll all be taking chunks out of that main uh, object, um, which is at the top of the layer stack uh, inside of the bool. So yeah, pretty cool, that's how that works. It was basically just a tedious process of doing that. And then after I take, took all the chunks out, I had to do a bunch of addition stuff. So again, I'll turn off my main bool or my main chunk there. And all of this stuff were, were just extra shapes added on to the top. And these are all pretty much just primitive shapes. I mean, this guy, for example, right here is its own kind of object with, you know, using bools with a chunk taken out of it. And yeah, everything else is just kind of primitive shapes. So just simple cubes, simple rectangles, even to get this kind of texture here that you can kind of see on the battery. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's that little gradient or that little checkered texture there. To create that, I literally created like a bunch of rectangles and just created this uh, lattice um, effect out of them. So that's pretty much how I created the battery. So you can do it in Cinema 4D Lite, it is possible. It's just a different method. If you are into 3D stuff, this is most likely not how you would go about creating 3D objects. Ever since creating this in Cinema 4D Lite, I've moved on to Blender, which is an amazing 3D program where you can really create pretty much anything. And you actually do it in the way that, you know, any 3D artist would actually create something in because it's not a light version of a pro program. Blender is a free, completely free, um, grassroots software it's it's pretty amazing though and yeah you can actually create it's like a full program it's not a light version so it works pretty well now going back to after effects you don't need to use cinema uh, element 3d but i use a plugin called element 3d um, it allowed me to element 3d is basically amazing for having really fast uh, renders and play and like real-time playback and after effects Usually when you have like, if you're using Cineware with Cinema 4D Lite, it's just gonna take a really long time to render. But Element 3D from Video Copilot allows you to take, you know, uh, OBJ files and just play them back really smoothly and add lighting effects. And it's just, 
it's really for the final touches. So yeah, I won't get into, you know, how I created the textures and, and the stickers and everything on the battery, but I did do that thanks to Element 3D. It's basically a matter of, I'll just jump back into uh, Cinema 4D here. It's basically a matter of adding a, a different texture onto each part of the object. So as you can see, it's like green and, and silver and pink, but the colors really don't matter inside Cinema 4D. The only thing that does matter is that you'll see I have a different texture. Every part of the battery that I wanted to kind of have its own unique texture, I would put a different texture on it. And then when you bring it into Element 3D, you can assign actual images to those textures. So that's how I kind of got the actual image from the battery onto the object in After Effects. So, and the part where I actually kind of went like this and then the battery was floating, I literally just held my hand out, went like that, and then kept moving as I naturally would. So there's a bit of a jump cut there um, when I did that just because the cut wasn't seamless, but that's pretty much how I did it. And then in After Effects, you just shine lights at it to kind of make it look like it has the same lighting setup as the actual set that I filmed that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, just let me know and I'll just do this again with more detail if you want. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next video and cheers.